Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Wright. Uh, this is the ICT Educator Webinar Series. I'm the statewide director for the Community College ICT Sector Team. And if you uh, visit our website, you'll be able to see all the wonderful things we've done and the number of people that work on our team throughout the state. And uh, you'll find their emails and phone numbers so you can call them up and say, hey, hey, how do I get more of that? Uh, over the last uh, year and a half or so, we've done uh, over 30, maybe 40 webinars by now. The general categories are here. They're all uniquely tailored to the community college system and the kind of things that, that we need to find out and things that we can implement. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at the list and see if there's something there that you like. It's all video recorded, transcripted, original PowerPoints, links, everything to make it easy uh, for you. We are at this now, we're at what was going to be the last one of the, of the year, but we decided uh, based on the interest uh, with the COVID-19 and remote everything else that uh, we would do one more, not next Friday, but the following Friday, we'll be looking at virtual reality training labs with Eon Reality, uh, perhaps a replacement for uh, welding labs, some nursing, some advanced manufacturing. So we'll see what Eon has been doing worldwide uh, with, with that technology on the 29th. Today, however, we have, I think, a really special uh, presentation. Uh, Thomas McMullen from NEPRIS is going to be take, walking us through their program, which has been around for quite a while, engaging business and students and sharing information virtually. And it's just what we need right now. But Shazad Bojani, who uh, has been uh, working with the, in the uh, San Bernardino Dino County Office of Education has done an implementation in the K through 12 system that he'll share their reaction to it. And, and Lena Heckbert is with uh, uh, Miramar, one of our community colleges, and they have just recently decided to go ahead and adopt it. And she's gonna give us some feedback on the faculty in, in, impressions and, and some of the things that she's heard. So I think we'll kind of get a good feel for whether this is the right thing and uh, that's how we'll go, go ahead. So at this time, uh, oh, by the way, I did wanna mention that toward the end of this, this uh, episode, broadcast, whatever you want to call it, we're going to have a survey, an online survey uh, of you uh, asking you if you're interested in this kind of uh, support service and whether um, uh, you think NEPRIS is, is something you'd like to do. And it'll be one where you can actually say who you are. And so we can get back to you because what I would like to do is at least get a general assessment from the people that are on the call how many colleges are interested. And I think that speaks volumes when it comes to funding and that kind of thing. So that's just a little opportunity we have toward the end of the call. At this point in time, I think our first speaker is uh, Shazad. You're gonna tell us a little bit about what's going on in the uh, San Bernardino area, right? Yes, absolutely. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, having me on this call. Uh, I wanted to take uh, this time to kind of share what we've done with um, uh, NEPRIS to connect our, our, our business community to our K-12 system. And I think my, my goal for this presentation is, is basically to show you how we've used it, uh, the scope of our work supported with the data, uh, so that it gives you some context of some of the successes that we've had and some of the challenges that we've faced along the way, uh, which will help you hopefully make a better decision uh, for uh, the community colleges. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, hopefully you can uh, see my screen and let me get back to my first screen. So um, we've called our project SB Connect um, because we, our hope was to really connect uh, our students in our county, uh, which encompasses 33 school districts, uh, three community colleges, uh, and uh, three ROPs uh, to the world of work. Uh, and we wanted to use a virtual platform to do that, uh, given that we are the, the largest county in the country. Uh, and we actually encompass not just San Bernardino County, but also Riverside County and making the greater Inland Empire uh, region. Um, and, 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 and some of the reasons why we wanted to kind of do that is because uh, we know from a data standpoint, we uh, have a high level of, of low socioeconomic uh, status within our community. Um, we know that the um, post um, secondary education attainment rate is really low. And we know that there's a lack of economic mobility um, within, the, within the communities that we serve. And, and one of our efforts with the Alliance for Education um, is to really support uh, the countywide alliance uh, to really producing an educated and skilled workforce. So just to give you a, a broad scope of, of the work that we do, uh, we're involved in, in two sides of the house. One is the career education side, as you can see on that screen, where we wanna really um, uh, educate mm -hmm. our students for the world of work. 
Uh, and on the right hand side, you'll see or uh, we'll see the SV Connect, uh, which is where we want to connect our workforce. We want to connect our industries and business partners to the K-12 system um, so that they're able to see the economic opportunities the skills, the attributes that are needed to be prepared for the changing workforce. Um, and so the scope of using the virtual platform to bridge this gap between the workforce and the K-12 system falls within the SB Connect, um, where we have three different sorts of series. We have an, a student series, uh, we have an educator series, and then we have a family series, which we're trying to build right now. Um, so, uh, the platform that we were using um, or we have been using uh, is Nepris and Thomas will, will tell you more about that uh, after my presentation. Uh, but we were using the platform to connect our industry to every classroom. Uh, we wanted to make it really easy for our teachers in our county to invite uh, business professionals and industry experts within our county to their classrooms to speak to students. Uh, whether it is speaking, as you can see on that screen, uh, if you are a, uh, you know, a manufacturer, uh, you know, the, the lady on the top left there, her name is Cinnamon Alvarez. She's a, a manufacturer based in Ontario and they produce our ceramic light, lighting fixtures. And so she talked with students about her business plan, entrepreneurship, uh, and really kind of answered questions for our students, showed them a virtual tour of her facility. Uh, on the right there, you can see the San Bernardino County Fire Department. Uh, they wanted to address students around fire safety. And so they used the platform to be able to do that. Um, uh, and, and down at the bottom, uh, you'll see BJ Patterson from Pacific Mountain Logistics, uh, who gave students a tour, a virtual tour of the warehouse, looking at uh, demystifying, right, the myths that they have about warehouse work uh, and the logistics industry. Um, you know, the scope of how we've used it includes elementary students, middle school students, and high school students as well. Um, and that's how we've kind of used it. Um, so here's some of the data um, to be able to share with you what we have so far. We started this work um, in September of last year, uh, September 25th, the end of September. And so far, we've been able to impact um, 7,162 students uh, with our SB Connect sessions. And what we mean by SB Connect sessions is where our team uh, facilitates uh, sessions with our business and industry partners, 35 of who uh, have agreed to and participated in conducting live chats from all different sorts of industries, whether it's sitting in front of a computer and sharing, you know, a day in the life of what you do, whether it's how you got to where you did, whether it's talking about certifications in your industry, um, whether it's giving a virtual tour of a particular machine that works, whether it's evaluating projects for students. Uh, as you can see that 56% uh, of those 7,000 students have been within our county. And because this is a national platform, 45% of the students have been outside. Uh, of the, the county uh, in our state, across the country, who've been able to benefit. Um, um, you'll see down at the bottom that we have 27 different participating business partners who've been able to do these different sessions, and some of them who've been doing this um, multiple times, and that's why we have 35 different sessions. We've got a very broad range of, of sectors, um, from um, you know, the public sector to the nonprofit sector to the manufacturers and all of the 15 different CTE sectors as well. Um, but that's been our data so far. Um, you know, we've, the, the data has been an area that I think we are kind of working with NEPRS on because we really wanted to use data to make sure we can show the impact of our work. And there have been some glitches around the data, which, which we're kind of working through to make sure that we can accurately portray the number of students that have been impacted and so on and so forth. But I think those are conversations uh, that we're continuing to have as we kind of go forward. Um, on this map, you'll see um, the county, but you'll also see all the different uh, areas geographically where we've been able to engage our partners within uh, with, the, with the hope that we've got three different uh, regions within our county. We've got uh, the West End, the East Valley, and the High Desert, and each of them have their own identity. And so we want to make sure that we can capture uh, business partners from all of those different areas. And we're kind of getting, we're getting there. Um, the High Desert has been the most challenging so far but we're starting to make inroads within that. Um, oh, let me go back. There's an important piece here that I want to kind of show you. Let me move this out of the way. So here, let me click on this and I don't know if you can see my screen. Oh, 
All right, can you all see my screen? I just shifted to showing you a map. Okay, so um, on this screen, what we've done is we've uh, put together a map uh, based on all of the different CTE sectors um, of the industry chats that we've done so far. So if you look at ICT, which is, uh, you know, what, what Steve, we're in right now in terms of that, let me kind of show you what we've done. Uh, so you'll see that we um, partnered with Converge One based out of Ontario uh, around uh, Engineers Week, uh, where career opportunities in IT consulting were shared with students. Um, we also partnered with, uh, we did an, uh, an information and communication technology regional advisory, which I'm sure all of you are pretty familiar with. Uh, and this was where we had different experts uh, from the industry there, and we were able to broadcast this live, uh, where educators from across our county joined virtually to learn about industry trends. We also had students virtually participate in this uh, so that we could capture their voice as well. Um, ESRI, uh, Geographic Information Systems, and at the bottom you can see the students that were impacted uh, within the county and, and nationally as well. Um, uh, General Atomics, but you can kind of see different uh, regions uh, and different um, uh, sectors that we've been able to kind of impact as we go forward. I wanted to show you here in the health science that um, we were able to do another regional advisory as well with the health sciences um, as well. And we've also worked with Crafton Hills College. Uh, I know one of the things with, with, with the way we use the platform is we, we've had our students and our teachers in our K-12 system be what are called takers. And so they take the information, but we've also used our industries and our community colleges uh, and our universities to showcase programs that they have. So uh, the Crafton Hills Community College Paramedic Program did a virtual tour uh, from which students could see not just uh, what, the, what, what the, the, the skill is or the, or, the, or the profession is, but also the program that's offered in the community college uh, you know, in their neighborhood. Uh, we've also done this with a, a manufacturing company uh, with Pacific Precision, where we had Chafee College, the Intech Center, uh, close off the chat, where we had a virtual tour of the facility, uh, but then uh, Chafee College came in and talked about the certification <laughs> that they provide to get the job that they saw um, in, in, in the tour that they had. Um, so those are some of the ways that we've kind of used it that I want to be able to kind of showcase uh, to you. And I can send you a link for this as well so you guys can see um, and explore further uh, if you'd kind of like to do that as well. So some of the work streams to kind of be aware of in, in terms of what we've done is, is uh, what we've figured out is, is that this platform is only as good as, as it's used. And, and, and even though NEPRIS has a lot of um, training in place and they have a lot of um, support in place with um, resources and, 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 and online virtual support, uh, we really had to put resources together on our team uh, to really engage both the givers, the industries in our community and the school districts. It wasn't an easy sell by any means. We're you know, 33 school districts wide uh, and only 12 of them have been able to engage in this platform so far. Um, and, and even and as with any new platform or any new technology, right, we have to figure out a way to be able to, 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 to show our, our sites and our districts um, how they can utilize it within their existing platforms uh, in their existing curricular structure to see the value of, of, the, of, of the tool. And so we've really been able to kind of do that with our differentiated support for district administration, for site leaders and teachers. Um, you know, the face-to-face the -face conversations, uh, being able to, to, to show them how uh, things work within their existing projects uh, has become really important. And so I think uh, one of the things for you to consider is we really have to invest resources within our team to make sure that we can go out with our givers, with our industry professionals to go out and film things with our equipment to make sure that our students on the other side are getting a really good experience um, and it's really kind of meeting their needs. Um, and then really kind of working with our school districts uh, to make sure that um, we're marketing and really kind of meeting their needs uh, through the project. Shazad, uh, have you had any occasion to use it since this whole this sheltering at home and remote schooling uh, has happened? Have you figured out how to adapt it or what you're gonna do in the fall? Yeah, well, you know, actually with uh, the number of, of industry partners that have been willing to do these chats uh, has actually greatly increased for us um, because I think a lot of our partners realize that the time to do this is now. 
Um, and so we've really seen a rise in the number of givers within our county uh, who are willing to participate. Uh, what we have seen though is a decline in the number of students that have participated. Um, because as we can imagine, not being within a traditional classroom where a teacher can guide the conversation or show a virtual chat, it's left up to the students. Um, and the students currently require an access, for, access code from the teacher uh, to access a live chat. So we've seen a decline in that, but I think that's been across the board and Thomas can talk to that a little bit during his presentation. Um, as we look at the fall, uh, we certainly uh, see this continuing. Uh, I think we are thinking about, um, as we all you know, know some of the budget crisis, you know, uh, budget you know, falls that are coming through and how do we take our network that we've kind of built uh, and really kind of meet the need going forward. Um, and so I think we're kind of thinking about that as well going forward, but I know the districts that are using uh, NEPRIS uh, are, are starting to think about how they can utilize this uh, going into a more of a distance learning model, right? Even when they start the school year. Well, that's great. Uh, Shazad, anything else uh, you wanted to comment on? Uh, no, that was it. Um, if there are any, a few questions I can answer them, but that's all I had. I, you know, I think we want to move right through the presentations quickly. Perfect. It's one of these things where we got to get as much information in sure. as possible before we start asking questions. So sure. I'd like to switch over to Thomas. So uh, if you could release your screen and he'll pick it up. Sure. And I'm sure Thomas will tell us how everybody's adapting in this uh, COVID environment. No, I was saying thank you to Shazad for uh, presenting uh, there on NEPRIS because uh, I know how much of an integral part we play uh, in, in a lot of things that they do in the county there, definitely. Uh, so a couple things I want to talk about in particular. First and foremost, uh, we've been around doing this for seven years. This isn't something that we just jumped into in February because of the distance learning. Uh, we've been doing this for about seven, seven years. We have over 86,000 uh, educators in our platform. Sorry, the prof it wants to move ahead of me. One second. So we have about 86,000 professionals in our platform, roughly 30, uh, 35,000 of those uh, educate. I'm sorry, uh, 35,000 professionals, 86,000 educators in our platform. Uh, we've done, you know, we run the gambit, every single career cluster you can think of that you guys have. Uh, we're a part of it. Some of the things going on in the headlines right now is, you know, we have the baby boomers. Those guys are starting to retire and they, we need some skillful folks that can come in and take over and do the work um, that, you know, these, these baby boomers are doing. So there are a lot of positions out there that are available and there are a lot of folks out there that aren't necessarily qualified for those positions. And that's kind of where we come in. Um, but there are some struggles, right? There's some, some, there's some legitimate struggles out there with how we actually get professionals in the classroom to interact. Why is that not happening all the time? There are a couple reasons why that's not happening. Uh, and I'll say, first and foremost, it's the geographical barriers that are causing the issues where I need to, as a professional, travel to. And just to be frank, there's gonna be a serious reluctance when you guys get back to this hybrid model, when you get back to brick and mortar, there's going to be a serious, serious reluctance on the part of professionals to come to campuses and a part of on a part of campuses to actually want to interact with those professionals face to face. Right. And, and we, we can help with that. Definitely. It's very much so time consuming in that professionals coming out. It's going to take them a long time to get there. It's also very difficult to get professionals to come out more than twice in a year with NEPRIS. They come out between four to six times as Shazad stated, you know, they can get repeat folks coming back and back. And the beauty of that is you can utilize your own professionals. Keep that in mind as well. Most districts or not districts, most schools want to hoard their professionals. We understand that there are competitive reasons behind that. And we can help with that in that if you have a professional you want to come into your classroom uh, to talk to your students or want to speak to your students environment. Call back. I definitely, have a our Thank professionals you. can do that. There's no problem with that. We can definitely come and speak to your class and take our professionals can take requests individually from the school sites you want them to take them from, right? So, um, and then there's this need of how do I align the professional coming in so that they come in fresh with an understanding of exactly what's going on in the classroom so there's no wasted time whatsoever. We can help with that as well in that all of our video requests that come in, they all have a description, they all have key questions that are gonna be addressed, 
and they all have the student learning outcomes that are expected from any and every teacher um, that's doing any lesson, right? So, uh, or faculty member. Um, there's also a lack of diversity. Folks need to see folks that look like them. Women need to see, um, you know, women in, in, in positions that are predominantly male dominated. They need to see that they can become those things also, right? They need to have mentors, right? That look like them. There's nothing wrong with that. That's an awesome piece uh, to the puzzle. So just wanted to bring that up. So the way we do it is we're similar to what you may know of as match.com in that we have a professional that wants to really engage with students, want to pay it forward. How do they do that? They, they don't have a medium of which to do that. Well, NEPRIS has become that medium for any and all professionals to come on board and present to uh, students, you know, telling them the ins and outs of their career, telling, showing them and mentoring them via projects, even helping your faculty and staff evaluate students, especially those students that are competing against other colleges right around the state and nationally. Um, our professionals can help with that. Also on the flip side of that, your faculty, your staff members are saying, I have you know, three or four engineers that I can call upon, but if they're not readily available, who do I call upon and how do I do that? Well, NEPRIS is the way to do that. And it says here uh, from, from um, Bill Simons, uh, the single biggest factor in enhancing career development of young people is engaging business and industry in the classroom. Uh, he's from ASU. So th this is something that's very, very poignant. This is something that is going to help it is about the here and now, not about a book that they're reading from five years ago. Our professionals are gonna come into the class and talk about the cutting edge technology that's being used right now in the workforce. And that's what our students need. A lot of them are gonna be going directly into the workforce. How about giving them a deep, a really deep knowledge of and understanding of the career field or the career pathway they're looking to choose. So, one quick thing, there are four engagement models. Two of those engagement models are live, and then the other two engagement models are recorded versions of live sessions that have already taken place. So the first is our industry chats, and our industry chats are awesome, and that's primarily what Shazat was talking and was speaking about, are the industry chats. They're a powerful way for our uh, professionals to reach students. In this day and age, in the distance learning, as an example, um, I know Terry can attest to this, we did um, a, a biotech uh, session. We also did one on dairy farming, and we had 8,000 participants participate in that uh, mobile dairy farm, right? So just keep in mind, as long as teachers have an opportunity to utilize Schoology, they can share all of the information in any link that they want to. And I'll show you guys when we get into the platform just a little bit, I'll show you how that works. But the live industry chats are a beautiful way for teachers and students to engage with professionals. Keep in mind, other folks from other community colleges may be there as well for that live community, uh, for that live industry chat. It's one to many, right? It's similar to a webinar, similar to what we're doing now. The other piece, the other component, the, the second engagement model is an individual teacher saying, I would love to have a professional come into my class and just talk to my class about the ins and outs. Just talk to my class about a project they're working on, right? Talk to my class and evaluate some things that are going on. So I want them to come and talk to my students individually at the date and time I want. And the beauty in that is we can make that happen. The teacher only has to select the person they want. They don't have to go back into the system. They select the date and time they want them there. And NEPRIS, the onus is on NEPRIS. If that person says yes, no, or nothing, if that person says yes, the session happens, no problem. But if that person that the teacher selects, that professional they select to come into the class says no or nothing, the beauty is NEPRIS will find someone for your faculty or your staff member. And we do it with about a 97% success rate. So that's the beauty in that. We can, we can do those two sessions live. Our video library has roughly 9,200 unique videos unto themselves, right? So each one of the videos is a unique video where a professional's coming in and bestowing the information that the teacher or the faculty member is requesting of that professional. So they're not coming in going, hey guys, what's going on in the class? They're coming in knowing exactly what's going on, 
knowing exactly what questions they need to address and knowing what the expected outcome of that session is. And the beauty there is our library, if you have questions, you can still from that recorded vision, a version of the, in the library, you can still ask questions of that professional. So keep that in mind. Uh, the fourth engagement model is our Career Explorer tool. Very, very powerful in that I can do a comparative analysis between various industry sectors, right? So if I'm talking about engineering, maybe I wanna look at mechanical engineering and do a comparative analysis between mechanical engineering, aeronautical engineering, and maybe chemical engineering, because I know I wanna go into engineering, but I'm not for sure which one works for me. Not only can I get all the information from the US Department of Labor from ONET, but I can all also hear from professionals that align to those specific pathways, to those specific professions. So if I wanna become, let's hypothetically say a registered nurse, I know the personality type I need to be. I know the, you know, the salary, the low end salary, the high end salary, whatever, whatever the you know, educational levels I'll, I'll need to have. All of that I can find out through the Career Explorer tool. So it's a great engagement model for your students to have so that they can understand, like I said, and build a deep knowledge of the profession they're looking to go into. So these are just a few of our industry partners. Of course, like I said, we have 35, thousand uh, professionals in our platform. We also have about 300,000 professionals that are in the background saying, hi, I, I need to use at least 40 hours of my time, right? So keep that in mind as well, uh, that a lot of our volunteers that are coming in, they need to volunteer and they want to volunteer and pay it forward to the generation that's coming behind them, right? So uh, with regards to reporting, I know Shazad mentioned this. This is something that we have definitely prided ourselves on and we are definitely improving. So if there are things that need to be um, said or th need, need to be done or changed, if you will, we can definitely do that. Um, but we do keep track of the usage, the activity, the number of sessions, the unique videos that are being watched, the companies that are represented, and the, obviously the number of students that are impacted uh, by the session. Uh, secondary to that are, is pricing. I know we're not really talking necessarily about it, but keep in mind, um, the pricing here that you see is for a three-year model. This is what we've done with every single uh, college that's out there, whether or not they want it strictly for CTE or they want it for um, their entire campus. So we can provide a campus-wide site or we can provide a CTE site license. Just keep that in mind. And these prices here, as once again, is for a $7,500 per year, three-year commitment at 22.5, or a $15,000 per year commitment um, for three years. Uh, following that up, we do have a plan in place that allows for um, the success of the team. At the end of the day, your, your teachers, your faculty members need to be trained. There needs to be a way of doing that, right? And the beauty there is, I know for a fact, being a former educator myself, coming out one time, training a, a faculty or staff member, and then leaving and not ever sh seeing them again is not an effective approach to making sure that there is usage. As Shazad said, we have a plan in place. We know how to make this work. And so that first meeting that we have with you is going to be an implementation meeting where we're going to set goals. We're going to understand you know, how to utilize the platform. We're going to help you guys understand how to utilize the platform from an administrative level so that we can set some usage goals. And then we're gonna set some training dates in that meeting as well. So the first professional workshop that we have 1.0 is gonna be within the first 30 days. We're gonna train all of yours. If you're just doing CTE, we'll train all of your CTE teachers that are there. We can record the session so that those that aren't able to make it uh, will be able to, you know, we can house it somewhere that, you know, is for public consumption but we're gonna get all those teachers trained up, whether they're accredited or not accredited a part of the CTE program, we're gonna get those folks trained up. Training 2.0, uh, PD 2.0, we're gonna come in and we're gonna do some more training within the, the first 60 to 90 days. We'll then have a mid-year review where all of us will come back together and we'll have an end of the year review as well. So just, just keep that in mind. I wanna come out, uh, this is my contact information, thomas at nepris.com. Um, I can easily be reached if you guys have any questions with regards to the platform, but I want to exit out and I want to go 
into uh, looking at the platform here a little bit. I'm logged in right now. A couple things I want to uh, you to take note of. Once we get your teachers trained, um, if they have any questions whatsoever, this little orange dot over here will help them. There is someone there for them from about 7 a.m. until about 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So keep that in mind. There's always gonna be someone there to help your faculty, your staff members understand exactly what it is they need to do within the platform because the training happens. Maybe they've been using it. Maybe they haven't used it in a month and they say, oh, how do I join an industry chat? Or how do I you know, look at the library? You know, they can quickly ask someone um, at around that time. So there'll be someone there for them. And if it's after hours, usually it'll, it'll be in an email format where they can type their question in there. It'll go to someone on our team and they'll get back to them via email uh, with a reply. So right now I'm in here and I'm a mechanical engineering uh, fac you know, faculty member. I also want my students to understand soft skills. So I have videos, the algorithms pick up the videos that are based on soft skills. And then if I'm teaching higher ed, if I'm teaching whatever grade level I'm teaching, it's going to provide me with videos that are along the lines of, of where I am, right? So remember I talked about those, set, those different um, areas, those four engagement models. First thing I wanna show you is our library really quickly. So our library, once again, consists of 9,200 videos, uh, almost 9,300. Couple things, uh, the career clusters that we have, these green numbers represents the number of videos that we have that deal with the specific career cluster, architecture and construction, art, you know, video, audio video technology, communications, business management, college career readiness, education and training, finance, government, health science. So a couple things here, if I wanted to go, and I can even look at, you know, various grade levels, right? So I can look to see, you know, what videos do we have in post-secondary that align to post-secondary, right? So I can see we have 271 videos that align to post-secondary in particular. So if I wanted to look and say, working as a respiratory therapist, and I wanna look at a little bit more detail, a couple things I wanna share here um, and, and help you guys understand. Let me log back in, sorry. So a couple things I wanna help you guys understand here. We do have some, some information here, some intel here. If I wanted to learn more, I could learn more. It's gonna take me right to our Career Explorer tool. If I really enjoy this, this library session that's, that's been done here or that I've shared with my students and it really resonates with them, keep in mind, I can recreate this from my own individual classroom as well, right? But the beauty here also is if I have a question to ask Monique here, I can ask Monique the question. Usually she gets back within 24 to 48 hours. Both the question and the answer is here for public consumption, just in case another student or another faculty member might have that same question asked, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll pose the question and the answer there. But um, also you guys are using Schoology in your distance learning right now. What's really nice is that I can add this, I can create a playlist and I can add this video to my playlist Let's just say I was looking at uh, patient care, right? And I want to save this to patient care. And I want to go back in and I want to add a video or a series of videos this week for dealing with specifically with patient care. So I can come here, look at my details, and I can just share this link out so that even if my students aren't logged into Nepris, they can just literally go to Schoology, click on this link, and this page will pop up with all of these videos and you're, you're, we, have, we have some Q&A. If your, your faculty members don't have necessarily Q&A, we can have some Q&A that can be attached to each and every video for your students to be able to pick up the key skills and concepts from industry professionals, right? This is also a way for your, your faculty and staff to be kept abreast of what's going on as well. Um, so that's our video library, uh, just in a nutshell. The second uh, piece I wanted to talk to you about is our Career Explorer tool. Very, very awesome. Once again, if, if I were looking at, you know, I just want to become an engineer, but I'm not certain as to what type of engineer I want to become. The nice thing is that I can do a comparative analysis, like I said, between the civil engineer, if I wanted to look at a mechanical engineer, and maybe I wanted to look 
at, yeah, chemical engineer as well, right? So I could do a comparative analysis, see the median yearly salary, see the 90th percentile salaries. Keep in mind, we're in California, so most is gonna hover around the 90th percentile salaries. Um, the career outlook, what the required education is, what they do, what they need, right? What tasks are they, ca are they tasked with? What's the working style? In my opinion, the most important thing is the, the personality and type. For, and for because the personality type is going to provide, uh, the personality type is gonna provide me with a better understanding of who I am personally and how I can thrive in a position, right? Not only have the position, but how I can thrive in that position. And if I wanted to learn more, of course, I could learn more about that very, that, that aspect. Once again, all of this information is backed by ONET, but once again, I have all of these videos that I can watch with regards to investigating and doing, uh, have, taking a deeper dive into that career field I'm looking to go into. Third uh, piece is our live component, and that's the industry chat. The industry chats are beautiful, as I stated before, because we put on roughly 60 to 70 industry chats every month. The beauty is if the community colleges come on board, you guys have themed months that you would definitely want to, for, for NEPRS to take part in, right? And so the beauty there is if you guys have theme months like, oh, February is financial literacy month. So we want throughout the month some things that are catering to higher end institutions for, you know, with regards to financial literacy. So your administrative teams will dictate the, the types of um, industry chats that are gonna be made available for your particular colleges, right? So keep that in mind. As I told you before, um, there's a description, there are key questions that are gonna be addressed in every one of our videos, and then the SLOs are there as well. This industry chat is for a professional or a team of professionals that are gonna come in and talk to any and everyone that is in our platform for that particular demographic. This one just so happens to be for high school. Keep in mind, we have some for you know, higher ed you know, as well. Um, and then if it's not there, you guys can actually add it. That's the beauty of the platform is it's always growing. Last week we had 9205. This week we have 90, 9275. So 70 videos were added within the last week. Um, so this one is, like I said, a session date of Mar uh, May 15th, 8 a.m. If I can make it, great. I'm going to register to attend this and interact, you know, this, this industry chat live. But if I can't make it because it's too early, I don't think my students can make it at that time. But we still want to see this video with regards to how do I visualize an idea. I can say I can't attend, but please email me the video so that I can then share that out on Schoology with my class, right? I could do that easily. Lastly, if I wanted to just create a session request for myself, keep in mind, I can do that, or I can just go back to the dashboard to the home screen, and I can say, I want someone uh, in biotechnology. Right, so once I click on, from my dashboard where it says start here, I just pull it, biotechnology because I want a biotechnologist to come into my classroom. The engagement models that we have afford for this to happen very easily and right now it's sifting through all of our biotech. Anyone who has a skill set set for biotech it's going to be here and I can ask any of these folks to come in individually right. So if I want Michael to come in or if I want Jennifer you know to come in I can have her come in. I can view her, her skills or her bio whatever I want to do but you'll see here, when I click on request a session from Jennifer, nothing's filled out for me, right? So it's gonna take me a little while to fill that out. I don't, I'm pressed for time a lot of times. I don't have the time. So the beauty is that I can take, I can look at videos, of course, for best practices, share with my students these videos, an introduction to biotech, GMO and you know, use in food. But what's really, really powerful is we have session templates that have already been done by other educators and all you need to do now is manipulate that session right so i can use this as a template and now you'll see that all the information is filled out for me i can change this from grade seven keep in mind all we're doing is front loading the information so the professional coming in knows i'm not speaking to a, a seventh grader i need to step it up a notch because i'm speaking to folks who are seriously about ready 
to get into you know, bio, a biotech career, right? So keep that in mind. All this information, all of these steps here are just providing that intel. A couple things really quick before I turn it over. There's always gonna be a topic presentation of some sort. So usually a general overview. Project mentoring, as I stated before. Project evaluations where you have a team of folks, a panel, an advisory board that can come in and help, you know, evaluate students' work. Student self-assessment is something that's done in Louisiana only, but um, as Shazad said, virtual tours, very, very key, right? When a person comes into the classroom live, they can't help students turn on the light bulb and understand what it's like to be in that position. They can't, this just simply can't be done, can't be replicated, but we can replicate that with regards to a virtual tour. How about someone coming in, a professional coming in, having their phones, and, and the, the, the faculty or staff member saying, I just want my students to hear a departmental meeting, what that sounds like, the innate language that's being utilized in that departmental meeting. That's powerful for my students to hear because they've never sat in a meeting before. They don't know what it's like to be in a job meeting other than maybe if they worked in fast food or they work somewhere, but they don't understand how in a career field, what those meetings look like, what they sound like, right? So it's an awesome piece to be able to do that. Also mock interviews. As we stated, your folks are going to be going into the real world, and what better place to have them practice than right in their class or right in their home if they're distance learning, but they can do it multiple times so they become comfortable. Everyone knows there are two sides to any position. It's the knowledge that you have in the position, and it's the knowledge that you need to actually find and, and understand how to, how to grasp and get into the position to be hired for the position, right? So just wanted to say that uh, really quickly. Uh, also, a couple things, the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, what is your class studying? That's the, you know, description. What do you want your know, students to learn from the expert, right? And then the question here, what are some of the questions you have? That's powerful. But one thing I wanted to bring up that I think is very, very important is if I want someone who is Latino or Latina to come to my classroom, I can request that here. If I want someone who's African American, if I want someone who's young, if I want someone who's older, right, I can project whatever person I wanted to the class as the faculty member, as a staff member. And I can also select the company that they come from. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I know it's been a little bit long winded, but uh, I'm going to stop there and uh, answer any questions if, if you guys have any. Let's, uh, I'll tell you what I think would work good in the interest of time. We're going to go ahead and switch over to Lena uh, Heckbert Miramar in just a, a second here. And, but uh, Thomas, if you could kind of scan the chat box and see what kind of questions there have been a lot of them popping oh, up. Okay. And, okay. and uh, the, uh, it, most of you can realize listening to Thomas, I've listened to him twice now. He, he, he knows everything about this system and he, he will tell it to you. Okay, and it was very hard for me to arm twist him into doing a high level presentation, and he did an excellent job, and I appreciate that. It's really very powerful. I think some of the things that are unique to us is it can be used in a remote sequestered environment where now people getting access codes from their home, whatever. Also, it supports our advisory board capability or a compliance capability that we have, so people would be able to do virtual advisory boards and still have people distributed remotely to attend that. So that, those are powerful tools because we have we're required to have advisory boards. And that's, uh, so in addition to that, all the other benefits, the fact that K-12 in some cases is using them, there's, I think it's just a lot of good things happening here that uh, should be considered. Prices, what the price is, I think on your per year prices is, is, uh, is reasonable, you know? But I, I think the, the biggest thing I learned from talking to you, Thomas, and, and, and others is that it's kind of like a gym membership. You, you can buy it, you can pay for it, but if you don't use it, that's right. Not worth anything. <laughs> so that's right. the big deal. Um, all right. Uh, I can answer a couple of these questions if you don't mind. Um, with regards to adult ed, um, yes, the program um, works with adult ed. In fact, just as it would work within a post secondary environment, keep in mind a lot of these folks, um, they don't understand a lot of concepts with regards to career pathways. So this, this is where, like I said, they can take that deep dive, like their students are gonna be taking that deep dive into having just better understanding, you know, these career pathways. Uh, the cost of the program is, is $7,500 a year for your CTE program, uh, but it's a three-year commitment. That's why it comes up to 22.5. Uh, 
uh, unless you're going to go whole school, which just doubles the cost because we're looking at uh, more of an implementation. How does one submit to make a presentation uh, for a future webinar? Um, I, can, I can give you my, if you just reach out to me, thomas at nepris.com, I can, I can definitely present individually to your campus if you guys want me to. That's not a problem. Keep in mind, we have four schools, roughly five, because Southwestern College is coming on as well. But guess how many schools I've actually spoken with? Five. I've, I've spoken with five community colleges, and all five of them are coming on board, guys. So keep that in mind. I haven't, we haven't uh, spoken with a lot of community colleges because you guys are hard to reach, and I'm glad I've reached the right people so that I can make those connections. Um, what percent? Uh, oh, yeah, I already gave that 97%. Uh, I, oh, yeah, he had to drop off. Would that price be consistent with K-12 schools? Yes, it's very, very consistent with regards to that. In fact, our price point was a lot higher, um, but after speaking with the four or five schools that we have on board now, we decided to go in a different direction, lower that price point because we felt like that price point would give us the median value of the platform, allow more schools to come on board at that lower cost because the, the understanding was, People are liking this, and I don't want our prices to be all over the place in the state, and we wanted our early adopters to have the same price as those that are coming in later. Um, yeah, I wish we had a, I think VR is the next level. Keep in mind, your colleges are going to get more students because of the fact that you are, you're going to be givers and takers with your local high school districts. How about them understanding now exactly the programs you guys have and your students, your, your lead students, some of your lead students, being able to explain it to high school students that are looking into community college as opposed to the Cal State as opposed to a UC, right? So this gives your schools a leg up over those others because they're gonna be able to do that. Um, the CTE frameworks are there. Yes, all the standards are there. Um, if you, on the back end though, uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, I'll stop there and for all the questions. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for going through that very quickly. It's, uh, of course. Uh, uh, Lena, could you uh, uh, share with us now, uh, you're at Miramar, and uh, you guys have decided to go ahead and do this, and you mentioned before the call that you had some faculty reactions. Can you go ahead and brief us? Yeah, it's just, um, we've only um, been toying around with this for about a month. Um, I like the everything that um, Thomas had mentioned as far as, um, you know, some of the things that can um, prevent um, bringing on a guest speaker or bringing on um, some of these work-based learning opportunities. I like that NEPRIS just fills in those gaps and really makes it easier for um, this to happen across the board and across classes. Um, one of the features I really enjoyed using um, was the um, Recreate This Workshop. So I was able to, um, I was looking at some workshops for our child development department, and I was looking at different um, ones and um, specifically one to know if there's anything that speaks to, you know, running a, your at-home daycare versus working for a traditional preschool. And so I was able to um, look that up and um, find like a workshop that was very similar, but she was based in Kansas. And um, she went into a little bit more of like the Kansas licensing. But b when I did the um, recreate this workshop or just clicked on that, all of a sudden she contacted me that evening, like I think it was within hours, it was even 24 hours that she got back to me, um, was able to, we just were able to kind of, you know, look at that workshop a little bit, just make a few altercations and then, um, found that it'd be a really good fit that, you know, if we just kind of left that part out and she would be willing to come and speak to our classes as well. And I think it's a, just a really good um, opportunity just to make this even more accessible for faculty right now, and especially as things are changing so quickly. Thank you, Lena, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we try, we try to get comments from the user community, you, Lena, and, and uh, Shazad. So uh, that the idea of looking at what uh, Thomas has presented is kind of seen in the light of day. And I appreciate your, your comments very much. Uh, from uh, the chat box, I think Thomas uh, took care of uh, most of that. Um, yes, any other questions? Yeah, Terry, uh, by the way, I mentioned before we started recording, but Terry's the one who uh, got all the sector uh, directors statewide to listen to Thomas and, and get excited about this. Yeah, I'm the kind of person like, you want me to listen to what about what? But, but anyhow, Terry got us going, so thank you, Terry. And as a result of that, uh, this we're having this kind of sector-wide presentation today. Terry, you wanna share? 
Yeah, and you're welcome. And by the way, you know, getting Steve on board and you were, you came on hard and fast. Um, that was, I thought that was a really big endorsement. You know, that's kind of a good monitor of, you know, you know, kind of testing, you know, how this is going to go. And, um, and I think for good reason that you, you came on board very quickly to this because I think it's a great opportunity. But before we leave from Lena, I just wanted to come back to, um, you know, I'd like Lena, you know, maybe if you could just briefly, you know, tell them who you are, what is your role at Miramar College and, um, and the interest and maybe a little bit, you know, what you know about, you know, why, you know, why did, why did the college want to adopt NEPRIS? Yeah, so um, I work at Miramar College as their work-based learning coordinator. Um, part of my vision for um, the role of work-based learning and on campus is that we'd be able to see it across disciplines, across the campus and across all classes. And I think a tool like this really just makes it um, more accessible. You know, our faculty are great at utilizing their network to bring um, guest speakers in, to um, bring those field trips um, as, you know, and just bring other ex exploration opportunities to our students. But I think, um, yeah, so a tool like this can just help um, bring it across the board and bring it to even more faculty. Um, it's just, it's easy to use. Um, Thomas kind of touched upon some of the um, challenges you can find if you're just relying solely on your own network, if someone's unavailable, if, um, you know, just it's time consuming, all of those things. And so I think a tool like this really um, does help just make it even more, um, yeah, across campus. One of the things I, I liked that Terry brought it up to the state directors or the sector directors is that uh, between the sector directors and all the regional directors of the Economic and Workforce Development Group, we have about 65 people whose job is to focus on employer engagement. And if we can't scare up some bodies to appear on a platform like this with those kind of connections, I mean, shame on us. But the problem has always been before, okay, you can scare them up. Now you got to get them down to having their, their chicken lunch at the local college, or you got to have this, that, or the other. It's, it's very hard to make it uh, more replicable and more accessible and all these other things. So I'm, I'm really impressed, especially obviously in, the, in this post-COVID uh, time frame right now, this is, a, is critical. But we do, the point I was making is we have a team of people that are prepared to help something like this work. So I think with the, if for those colleges that do want to go forward with this, uh, we want to uh, encourage you to work with your regional directors to help populate it. Now this might be a good time, Nicole, for us to run that survey. You all have heard this. We have a couple of questions and you have the opportunity to say uh, where you're from or Nicole automatically knows who it is. So if you would go ahead and, and, and answer this, I'll be utilizing uh, whatever the results are uh, and sharing it with the sector directors to determine if this is a kind of a recommendation we want to make uh, to the chancellor's office or, or uh, wherever we can find the money these days uh, as to how this kind of tool could, could be utilized. I mean, we, we believe most uh, investments are made through the districts and through the colleges. Uh, that's typically the way the money flows. But sometimes an endorsement or perhaps a statewide user group or, or some kind of program that encourages something can, can be very helpful. I hope so, I can well, fill it out. Can I fill it out also, Steve? Yes. <laughs> we'll let your one vote count. Yes. <laughs> right ahead. Okay, so uh, we have a 41% uh, yes, 47% maybe. Are we done? Is this over yet, uh, Nicole? Is that a complete we'll have votes trickling in? We can let it go another 10 seconds or so, and then I'll end it. Well, what, yeah, obviously what we're seeing is that people want a virtual platform because obviously we're stuck. We're all virtual right now. Is it Nepris or not? Kind of 50-50 at this point in time. So uh, we, uh, it's good positioning for a start. And uh, all right, that's good. Well, we're pretty close to the end of our hour. I'd like to ask our uh, speakers, uh, Thomas, uh, Lena, anybody else, if you have a final statement to, to make? I think Shazad had to go. Um, sure. Any uh, final comments? I, I just want to say, you know, when you guys go back to your, to your brick and mortar classes, chances are there's going to be a hybrid type of setting, I would imagine, in order to, um, in order to make sure that we can adhere to some sort of safety measures until we have a vaccine, right? 
So with NEPRIST, keep this in mind as well. I know you guys are using Schoology, but keep in mind for your CTE staff members in particular, they can have a portion where they can be recorded in their classroom and the portion of students that are in the classroom will be able to pick up that key knowledge, but that can also transcend to the virtual space where those students are not in the classroom. They can also get those key skills and concepts taught to them at the very same time, right? So that at the exact same time, utilizing the platform. So if we wanted to have a professional come in and bestow knowledge, we can have both of those happening at the exact same time. So that, that is something that we can do and it's not a problem. Just wanted to end with that. Yeah, you, now you've mentioned Schoology. I actually, I, I think you mean a, a, a manager of- uh, LMS, yep. LMS, and I think we use Canvas. Oh, I'm sorry, Canvas, sorry, Canvas. I always get Schoology in my mind, sorry about that, guys. That's okay, but for everybody here that's on Canvas, it, it integrates yeah. well with Canvas, right? Okay, so that's a, probably an important point to make, okay. Good. All right. Well, I want to thank our, our speakers uh, very much, everybody who attended today. Uh, uh, please share the information with your uh, uh, friends and associates. If they want to see this, this whole thing is recorded, uh, edited, transcripted, uh, PowerPoint's available. It should be up on our website by uh, late next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Take care.